Right now at 8, the hunt is on for a killer in Washington State after a deadly mall shooting. What we've learned about the investigation. Plus, another warm day on tap here in North Texas, but changes on the way. Meteorologist Jeff Ray straight ahead with the details. Is over, and the Rangers are champion to 3 0 shutout of the A's. And there they are. The Texas Rangers clinch the American League West. The celebration continues. Plus, we'll tell you when postseason tickets go on sale. CBS 11 News at 8 starts right now. This is CBS 11 News Saturday morning. The ones for Texas. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to CBS 11 News this morning at 8. I'm Vanessa Brown. Jennifer Lindgren has the day off. Well, you may want to grab that umbrella if you have outdoor plans this weekend. Rain is on the way. Meteorologist Jeff Ray is in our weather center with a first look at the forecast. Hey, Jeff, just in time for the new season. Thank you, Jeff. Well, if you're a local baseball fan, some great news. The Texas Rangers are the American League West Division champs. <laughs> The Rangers clinched the title for the second year in a row, Friday night beating the Oakland Athletics 3-0. This marks the Rangers' fourth division title in the last seven years. There are still several games left to play in the team's regular season, which ends at home in Arlington one week from tomorrow. Fans are expected to line up to get their hands on AL West Division Championship clothing today. You are looking live at Academy Sports and Outdoors in North Richland Hills, where hats and t-shirts are already on store shelves this morning. And this is a live look at Globe Life Park in Arlington, where postseason tickets go on sale in a little less than an hour. The first base box office and phone center will be open from 9 until 4 today. You can see there are already a few people in line. Tickets are 50 bucks each. Fans can buy up to 12 12 tickets for either home game one or home game two. While the dates an opponent have not yet been set, the AL Division Series starts October 6th. Now to a developing story out of Washington State, where police are looking for a gunman in a mall shooting that left five dead. Four women and a man were killed. Carter Evans has the story. Carter Evans, CBS News, Los Angeles. Don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. He has no weapon. He has no weapon. Protesters march through the streets of Charlotte, North Carolina for a fourth night. They are demanding police release their videos of the police shooting of Keith Lamont Scott. Hours earlier, Scott's family released a video of his, that his wife recorded of the incident. The family wants police to release body and dash cam video, but so far investigators have refused that as Scott's mother calls for peace. If I were to put it out indiscriminately and it doesn't give you good context, it can inflame the situation. Y'all could have a peaceful um, walk or anything else that y'all want to do, but riding is not helping the situation and making it worse. Police say they recovered a gun at the scene. Witnesses claim they didn't see one. Scott's family claims he carried a book. In Ohio, a funeral will be held today for a 13-year-old boy shot and killed by police. Tyree King will be laid to rest in Columbus this morning. Ten days ago, an officer shot the eighth grader while investigating an armed robbery. Police say he ran from them and pulled out a BB gun that looked like a real firearm. A grand jury will determine whether to pursue charges. The Black Police Association of Greater Dallas says the killing of black men is an epidemic and must stop. Being a black man in America you're probably three and a half times more likely to be shot by a police officer. On Friday, the group, which represents 600 officers, said DPD needs to ease minority fears. It suggested creating outreach programs in elementary schools. Members say the department also needs a civilian review board for cases involving deadly force. So far, Chief Brown and Mayor Rawlings have not responded. A warning for those who use the Katy Trail in Dallas. Police say a jogger was robbed Thursday night around 1030. The robber didn't have a weapon and got away before officers arrived. The victim was not hurt. Mansfield police say the unexpected death of a Mansfield football player appears to be an accident. 15-year-old John Moran died early yesterday morning after sparring with a friend on Thursday. Gilma Avalo shows us how teammates and friends are remembering the team. Thanks to Gilma for that report. Now to a traffic alert. Big changes coming for drivers to use the HOV lanes on 635. The HOV lanes are now closed in both directions for a few weeks. Workers are going to convert them into Texpress managed toll lanes like other parts of 635 and other highways in the region. The lanes are expected to reopen as toll lanes in October. 
Some people who live near Texas Motor Speedway are packing up and leaving for the weekend. 16 of the hardest rock groups will perform at tonight's Texas Mutiny concert. An electronic music festival back in April led to complaints on social media about noise and a promise from TMS officials to make changes. The Speedway says it has moved its stage, but neighbors worry it won't be enough. Well, coming up, which presidential nominee is opening a Dallas office today? Plus, a big change goes into effect, how it could impact your credit rating. Also, an Indiana restaurant has gone to the dogs. See how it's reaching out to a new group of patrons. And former NFL player Marshawn Lynch is known for his sweet tooth. See how he's hoping to cash in with a sweet deal. Now to campaign 2016, Hillary for Texas will open a general election campaign office in Dallas today. That opening happening at 1 this afternoon. The office is located at 1639 Walnut Hill Lane. Supporters and volunteers will tell people who show up how they can get involved and help in the Clinton campaign. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will meet with Hillary Clinton and her GOP rival Donald Trump tomorrow. This comes as the two prepare for their first presidential debate on Monday. A new poll shows Trump surging ahead in some battleground states. He also picked up a late endorsement from a former rival. Craig Boswell has the story. An estimated 100 million people are expected to watch the first presidential debate Monday night. Our own Jack Fink will be there. Tune in to see the action at 8 p.m., then Jack's take from the inside at 10. A big change to your credit report starting today. Until now, when you applied for a mortgage, lenders looked at your credit as sort of a snapshot in time. Well, now lenders will see how you've paid your bills over 30 months. Experts say if you pay in full each month, you are considered low risk and could qualify for a better interest rate. But if you pay the minimum amount due, you're considered higher risk and could end up with a lower credit score. Uber is stepping up security. Drivers will now be required to share selfies before using the app to pick up passengers. Facial recognition technology will verify the driver's identity. Uber says the move will help protect its driver's accounts and prevent fraud. This week, an Indiana restaurant introduced a new menu that has tails wagging. One of Greenwood's most popular restaurants is reaching a new set of patrons with a menu just for dogs. Dogs get popcorn on the house, and there are entrees like tuna and salmon stew or chicken and sweet potatoes. The cost, 3 to $4 each. Krista Taggart's puppy is eating it up. Well, my daughter, Rory, loves taking Leia everywhere possible. So the idea that we could take her with us to eat and she could have her own menu. It's a fun, special treat for all of us. Yeah, I got to include the dogs in that right now. The menu is seasonal because dogs are only allowed on the patio. Former Seattle Seahawk Marshawn Lynch is hoping to score an, an, on a new field. The former running back is getting into the candy business. He has launched his own line of chocolate bars called, you guessed it, Beast Mode. The bars will come in three flavors, chocolate mint cookie and milk, chocolate peanut butter pretzel, and chocolate s'mores bar and milk. Sounds pretty good, right? If you haven't had breakfast, maybe. <laughs> The new National Museum of African American History and Culture opens its doors to the public today. President Obama will headline the dedication on the National Mall at 9 o'clock about a half hour from now. Marley Hall takes us inside the museum. And at today's dedication, President Obama will ring a 500-pound bell on loan from First Baptist Church in Williamsburg, Virginia. It was founded by slaves and free blacks back in 1776. Tonight, there will be a public music festival featuring living color, public enemy, and the roots. Right now at 7, captured what we know about the man police believe shot and killed five people at a mall in Washington State. Plus, more rain moving into North Texas, but will it be a washout? Stormwatch meteorologist Jeff Ray is keeping an eye on the situation, plus your full forecast and countdown to kickoff. A look at Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott's dilemma going into tonight's game against the Bears. CBS 11 News at 7 starts right now. Good morning and welcome to CBS 11 News this morning at 7. I'm Vanessa Brown. Jennifer Lindgren has the day off. Parts of North Texas are waking up to rain this morning. As you can see there on your screen, our Fort Worth camera is wet. Lightning sparked several house fires Saturday night and storms knocked out power to hundreds of people across the area. At last check, it appears the power has been restored prior to this new round of storms moving in. Meteorologist Jeff Ray joins us now with a first look at the forecast. Thank you, Jeff. Storms causing a headache for some. This is one of those house fires we were talking about. Investigators say lightning sparked it in Irving. The fire broke out before 10 p.m. In the 600 block of Brookstone, no reports of any injuries. 
The weather also causing problems for this weekend's balloon festival in Plano. Two more launches scheduled for today. Weather grounded balloons late Friday and Saturday, but even on the ground, they managed to put on a spectacular show. Saturday night, crowds watched the balloon glow in awe, then fireworks lit up the skies. Hours earlier, pilots huddled for a briefing on a scheduled 6 p.m. launch. A small black test balloon flew so fast the launch had to be scrubbed. Despite the weather, people seemed determined to have a great time. It's fun. A lot of nice people, so it's great mixing and mingling. You know, it's cool. Organizers have one more chance for an evening launch tonight at 6 before the festival wraps up at 7. You can track the rain with the CBS 11 Stormwatch team. Just download the free CBS DFW weather app. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Find us by searching CBS DFW. New this morning, Fort Worth police are looking for a gunman who shot and killed a teenager. The shooting happened early this morning in the 3400 block of Stonewall Lane. Investigators say a man walked by and shot the 17 year old who was with a friend in the driveway of his home. No word on if there was an argument or fight that led up to it. The victim's name has not been released. The sentencing phase begins tomorrow in the trial of Enrique Orochi. Last week, jurors found Orochi guilty of the aggravated kidnapping of Christina Morris. He now faces up to 99 years in prison. If the jurors sentence him to 10 years or less, state law requires them to consider probation as well. On Friday, we talked to attorney Stephanie Holin, who followed the trial closely. She believes the fact that the jury spent 17 hours to reach its verdict is a strong sign they will lean toward a heavier sentence. But I also think this jury was very thoughtful. They didn't immediately come back with a not guilty. And once we passed the first evening in deliberations and they were sending questions out, you could tell that this jury took their duty very seriously. Holland says the average sentence for aggravated kidnapping is 40 years. Now to a developing story. The man police believe is responsible for a deadly mall shooting in Washington state is behind bars this morning. Investigators say he didn't put up a fight when they arrested him near his home Saturday night. Brooke Silva Braga has the story. Brooke Silva Braga for CBS News, New York. Here in North Texas, search crews will be back on the water this morning to look for two missing boaters. The game warden tells us three men went in when their boat capsized on Cedar Creek Lake in Kaufman County Saturday morning. One of those men swam to shore. The other two have not been found. Authorities have not released their names. We hope to learn the identity of a man who drowned at Lake Worth. Crews recovered his body Saturday. The Fort Worth Fire Department says the man jumped into the lake around three yesterday morning. A top honor in Arlington, Superintendent of the Year, Dr. Marcelo Cavazos beat out four other finalists to be named top in Texas by the Association of School Boards. We got up with him at a dinner where he was recognized. He says he's humbled, but says the credit really lies with everyone in the community and staff who played a role in the achievement. So it says that in Arlington ISD that we are really transforming the district in ways that are producing outcomes, in ways that we're engaging our students, and our students and our staff, they're, they're experiencing a lot of success. Cavazos began his career as an English teacher. He was named superintendent in 2012. Tomorrow, grief counselors will be on hand at Mansfield High School after the death of a football player. Mansfield police say the unexpected death of 15-year-old John Moran appears to be an accident. They say Moran was sparring with a friend on Thursday night then later complained of abdominal pain. The teen died at a local hospital the next morning. Moran was a sophomore and a member of the JV football team. Well, rain or shine, DFW's largest ovarian cancer awareness event is underway right now at Lone Star Park in Grand Prairie. It is the 16th annual Run Walk to Break the Silence on Ovarian Cancer. It's part of a month-long awareness campaign. It is estimated that 1 in 75 women will be diagnosed in their lifetime. There's no early detection, so ovarian cancer is typically caught in a late stage. The Dallas Cowboys host the Chicago Bears at AT&T Stadium tonight. So far, rookie quarterback Dak Prescott has thrown 75 passes to start his career without an interception. That is an NFL record, but get this, Dak doesn't have any touchdown passes either. The Cowboys have scored four touchdowns on the ground this season, but at some point, Dak has to throw one. Uh, yeah, I mean, stats and anything I really I care too much about. Uh, as long as we're, we're winning, it'd be nice to throw some touchdown passes, uh, but as long as we're scoring is all I care about. 
CBS 11 is your home for complete Cowboys coverage before and after the game. Check out Cowboys game day with Randy White at 1030 this morning. Then tonight, former head coach Dave Campo will join Bill Jones here on CBS 11 News for a complete wrap up of the Cowboys Bears game. Still to come, police in Charlotte, North Carolina, release video of the shooting death of a black man there. Why some say it raises more questions than answers. Plus, campaign 2016, the high profile leader both presidential nominees are each scheduled to meet with just hours before they face off in their first debate. Now to a developing story out of Charlotte, North Carolina. The release of police footage from a deadly officer involved shooting has done little to quiet protesters. Saturday night, hundreds of people marched in the streets for the fifth night in a row. Charlotte police say it was a peaceful protest. No arrests were reported. The march followed the release of some of the video officers recorded during the minutes leading up to that deadly shooting of 43 year old Keith Scott. The police chief says Scott had a gun in his hand, but it can't be seen in the video. We've interviewed all of our officers was involved and the consistent themes were the facts and that's what um, I stand behind. What we do know is that the moment Mr. Scott is shot it appears as though he's not aggressively moving towards law enforcement he's actually doing the opposite. The department also released a photo of a gun found at the scene and said tests revealed Scott's DNA and fingerprints on the weapon. People marched through downtown Tulsa on Saturday to protest the police shooting of an unarmed black man there. 40-year-old Terrence Crutcher was shot more than a week ago by officer Betty Jo Shelby. Shelby is charged with first-degree manslaughter and is out free on bond. Later on Saturday, hundreds of people packed a local church for Crutcher's funeral. Church leaders say they don't want anyone shot down in the streets again and vow to work with local elected officials to prevent a future tragedy. Now to campaign 2016, the first presidential debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump is a little more than 36 hours away. Today, the nominees are expected to meet separately with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in New York. Jill Wagner is there with a look at how they're preparing for the big debate showdown. Tune in to see the action at 8 p.m., then get Jack's take from the inside at 10. Many in the Midwest bracing for flooding as storms continue. Iowa's governor already issuing emergency disaster proclamations for 13 counties. In Cedar Rapids, volunteers are filling sandbags and homeowners are clearing basements. The Cedar River is expected to crest on Tuesday in the state's second largest city. Thousands have been warned to evacuate in the same area devastated by record flooding back in 2008. Well, Jeff, I heard the thunder wow. last night. Hopefully yeah. nothing serious like that headed our way. And you lost electricity briefly at your yeah, house, you're telling briefly, me? Briefly, you know, you woke up, you got to change all the clocks again. Right. But uh, right. no, no complaints, people dealing with something much more serious. He is working to keep a Texas tradition alive. Coming up next, meet this week's Texan with Character. Cowboy boots may be a timeless Texas tradition, but repairing them is something of a dying art. As Jennifer Lindgren shows us, Wayne Craig's lifelong dedication to this Lone Star craft makes him this week's Texan with character. And our thanks to Jennifer for that report. Coming up in our next half hour, raising money to help rape victims in North Texas. See how one man has turned his life around and is now helping those in need. Now to a developing story out of Boston. At least six people are hurt after police say they were stabbed in the theater district early this morning. Police are still looking for the suspect and believe he may be hurt as well. They say it all started with a fight just as the bars and restaurants were closing for the night. One person is in critical condition. The others are expected to survive. In just a few minutes, CBS News will honor the career of Charles Osgood with a special edition of CBS Sunday Morning. Osgood is signing off after 22 years as anchor of the broadcast and nearly a 50 year career with the CBS network. CBS Sunday Morning starts at 8 o'clock. Well, before we get to that, we've got to talk some weather. Yes. A lot of rain we're seeing out there. Hopefully, maybe wash away some of that ragweed for allergy that suffers. That is the best news of this all, isn't it? Got to find that weed. silver lining. Yeah, in the middle of the week last week with some of the highest counts ever recorded. Down in the hill country, there is a man making drinks with prickly pear cactus, and it's not a garnish. Texas country reporter Bob Phillips has the story. A very wet Sunday. Yeah, wet Sunday, a lot of outdoor events. Hopefully many of those can still take place. At least that Cowboys game is inside. It's inside. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jeff, and thanks to you for watching CBS 11 News Sunday morning.